What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. In today's idiotic video, I talk about tripods for your Sony a7S III, such as this Sony a7S III mounted with the 2470 Sigma DGDN DN stands for D's Nuts Lens. Definitely not a small setup by any means, also including a made in China small rig cage it's actually quite big. So the other day I was filming on a client shoot that pays quite a bit of money. And of course, as always, I like to post my opinions and uh, anything I know about the Sony a7S III or just general videography or filmmaking. I post it up, I share it with you guys, my YouTube channel, as well as various Facebook groups. One of the Facebook groups is Sony a7S III Facebook group, filled with a lot of reasonable dudes and a lot of real big douchebags. So let me continue on with this subject of tripods. So I had used this small little tripod here, the Manfrotto Be Free Live tripod with this cheap, pair gear, whatever, tripod head. It is obviously not a fluid head. Matter of fact, it actually has a fluid pan, but the tilt isn't so fluid. So it's kind of a hybrid video-ish photography type tripod head. And why did I put that on this tripod versus something like this fluid head here, this much bigger Manfrotto fluid head here, or the actual Manfrotto fluid head that came with the tripod when I purchased it? Well, I'm about to let you know right now. The reason is I try to keep my gear as compact as possible. This tripod here, as well uh, as the second one that I have here, in combination with this $500 douchebag Peak Design travel tripod in carbon fiber, so you know that I am not necessarily cheap with my gear. It's just the fact that I like to keep things nice and small. And I guess because I'm Asian, I'm used to using small items, but creating massive quality production with small items. With that being said, this whole tripod kit, three tripods fit in a carry-on box, carry-on luggage on an airplane. So when I travel, I don't have to check this stuff in, risk losing them and having to run around trying to look for another one, rent another one. I always have my gear on with me in my carry-on luggage, no problems there. The second goal I have with this is the fact that I don't wanna have two different sets of gear for the shoots that I do. If I travel, I wanna have the same stuff. If I shoot locally, I wanna have the same stuff, which is why I travel lightly. Now, obviously this is useful for me because I shoot on Sony a7S III. I don't shoot on a DSLR. I don't shoot on a D-bag cinema camera. I shoot on something small and light and I have been doing so for the longest time. And before when I used to use these bigger tripod heads, these bigger cinema or video fluid heads and I mounted the Sony on it, it's fine. It's a little bit cumbersome. It is bigger. It takes up more space. And then, you know, you have this extra handle here and before, when I used to mount this on this tripod, I would also have to take this off before I put this into the carry-on box. But now with the smaller head, I could just put it right into the carry-on box and I'm good to go. So now you may ask, why did I choose like a photography head versus a video head for my tripods? Answer is simple. I don't do douchebag tilts and douchebag pans. All of my shots that I use with the tripods, whether it be interview, whether it be weddings, which um, I'll point out, I've shot over 80 weddings with this tripod, outdoors, indoors, windy conditions. It has never tipped over once, even with the 7200 G Master mounted on top for the duration of a wedding. So if you're asking whether this is safe to use, you, you, know, you could be confident with your gear, I highly recommend getting this tripod if you're looking for something light, easy to travel with, easy to carry, and is safe for your expensive video gear. So long as it's something like an A7S III. So when I posted a photo with my Sony A7S III, this one and this one here, mounted on that little tripod, 
onto the Sony a7S III forums just to kind of prove a point like, hey, look, the new FX6 came out and a lot of filmmaker foreskins on there decided to talk about how the Sony a7S III is no longer professional. If you want to be professional, you want to look professional, you need to get a real cinema camera. So I said, hey, look, I'm actually on a client shoot right now. I am making money. The client doesn't care even what I'm shooting with. They know what I produce. So, hey, look, I'm going to post this up. And I said, sarcastically, I kind of want an FX6 right now to make myself look more professional. And of course, the filmmaker foreskins, AKA the skin flaps of cinematography, decided to point out and clown on my small little dinky tripods as if it was my penis or something. Little do they know that these small tripods have produced hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what I'm trying to say is this, there is somewhat of a problem of overkill in this videography filmmaker world, okay? People are doing way too much with their gear to produce the same thing as something as simple as this rig right here. The other day, I'm not gonna mention the channel, I'm not gonna mention the creator. Uh, dude is amazing, very creative, probably more creative than me, a lot better than me, I'm, I don't mind saying that, all right? But he had this massive rig for the shoot that he was doing and I'll, for his Sony a7S III, it was like this huge rigged up thing. And I'm looking at the video and I'm looking at the product and I'm just kind of like, do you really need all of that to create this? It made absolutely just no sense to me because I've seen things that I'm, you know, I'm not gonna Joan, but things that look better, look just as professional, um, just shot with the, camera and the lens versus a whole rig or just camera and a gimbal. Like there's certain things that you just gotta know what your gear, the gear you have and what you're trying to do. Like for me, I'm trying to just, I had to set this up. I have to go in, set up the tripod in like less than two minutes, put the camera on, film, shoot, get everything out, go home and I have to edit some videos for another client. So it's, I don't have all this time to freaking put every little piece of item onto this camera, bring in a big old tripod, maybe have to make two or three trips back and forth to my car just to get all the gear I need or load it up into a big old cart. I could literally just have this camera in my little backpack, all of my tripods in one hand or just in a little smaller little wagon that I use and I'm in there set it up and I'm ready to shoot versus just doing this whole nonsensical rig. For what? Does it to look more professional? Because the actual product created does not look like it's any better than what it is on this. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you have a small camera, right? A lot of these companies now, they're getting more progressive, whether it be Sony or Canon, Blackmagic, Z cam, they're making these cinema cameras or cinema capable cameras a lot smaller. So why are we still using these massive tripods, which on 99% of the time, it is sitting there like this. You're not panning, you're not tilting. So why are you lugging around these big extra things when all you actually really need is this tripod? And if you're still over here doing tilts, on your tripod for like a shot, you are like stuck in the 90s, bro. Like who tilts or pans on a shot anymore? People do things on gimbal. People do more, I don't wanna say advanced movements with the camera, but things are a lot different now. No one, matter of fact, anytime I see a pan or tilt in a video, I am not watching that video, the whole thing. That's, video is done to me, it's dead. So, the only time I use a tripod is for a still shot. And occasionally I might rig up two tripods and have like a slider that moves back and forth for an interview. But that's like a totally different setup for a totally different time. This setup is for 99% of applications. I do have other bigger tripods here just in case I do need to shoot with a big old slider for a moving shot for an interview. So with that being said, I wanna recommend that if you have a Sony a7S III 
and you're looking for a tripod that you could use for travel that is high quality, um, I recommend these two. I recommend this Manfrotto Briefly Live. And of course, if you have more stacks, I recommend the Peak Design one because as you can see, it's smaller, it's thinner, you could actually fit this in a backpack comfortably if you're traveling. Um, and it's actually very safe to use with large camera setups such as Sony a7S III with the 7200. I've done it. So that's okay. And of course, this is the Manfrotto B Free with this pair gear head. Uh, this head is probably about 30 bucks. Um, so yeah, it's not expensive, but it's built very well. And as you can see, it folds up right between the legs here. That sounded weird, but anyways, you have this nice little compact tripod that holds pretty much your Sony a7S III and any lens that you wanna throw on it, maybe other than like a 400 millimeter F2.8 or something like that. But yeah, all I'm saying is do what you're comfortable with. Um, continue to do what, you, what you're doing if it produces for you. Um, use whatever gear you want, use whatever tripod you want, use whatever gimbal you want, use whatever camera you want. I do what works for me. I do what I know works for me uh, based off of my experience for the past five, six years of filmmaking. And and at the end of the day, do, like I said, just do what produces for you. I have never once in my career of videography and filmmaking where a client hired me or didn't hire me based on the gear that, I sh that I'm shooting with. I've showed up to big time client shoots with Alpha 6400, Alpha 6600 crop sensor cameras. I've showed up with A7 III's 8-bit Sony cameras, and I show up now with A7S III, and all this time, I've never been asked what camera I shoot with, and I've always been paid either 25%, 50%, and in full before I even show up to shoot any video for any client. So with that being said, if you still think that having big gear, big cinema rigs, or what have you, that pretty much produce the same image quality as a Sony a7S III or some other smaller cameras, and you think that will land you better uh, clients, keep living that life. But I'm telling you, times are changing and companies such as Peak Design, Manfrotto, Sony, Canon, they're realizing that they don't need to make bigger cameras anymore because people are traveling more, people are more interested in running gun setups. That's why mirrorless cameras have been so popular. And on top of that, a lot of people nowadays are having arguments between the FX6 and A7S III. And if you look at the FX6, look how small that camera is compared to FX9. And a lot of, a lot of ways it outshines the FX9 in terms of specs and its capabilities. So look at that FX6 and you see where the direction is, as well as a, ro a red Komodo, uh, Canon C7, you see what the direction is in terms of where um, camera brands and cinematography is going. They're realizing that the more compact, the better. And it all comes with uh, the improvements technology because probably one or two years ago, you couldn't get a Sony a7S III specs in a body like this because of heating. So that is that, that's just my opinion. Um, it's my channel, my YouTube channel. No one pays me to say this, matter of fact, the only thing that pays me legit money for this is actually the clients that I shoot for. And it gives me the opportunity to even have time to do this kind of thing. But no one pays me for this. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm just voicing my opinion. So it's my channel. I say what I feel like. If you're into that kind of thing, please give this video a like and a subscribe. And until next time, lighten up.